It is a beautiful day for baseball at William Christman High School, the brand new Ross Family Field, playing host to the second game of our doubleheader as the Bears take on the Truman Patriots. Hello, welcome to William Christman alongside former Royal Les Norman. I'm Lee Fleisick. Les, this is such a gift for all the players to be able to play some sort of high school season in this spring, but especially maybe for Truman. You talk about the seniors. I think it's especially special for the coach. It is. Head coach Corey Latham has had these guys as a middle school teacher. He's had these guys since the seventh grade all playing together. And then all these years later, you're waiting six years and then a global pandemic hits and takes away your senior year. So this is a great opportunity for all these seniors at Truman to be able to play under their coach who's been with them all these years. And how about the Bears of William Christman? They get a chance to break in their brand new, beautiful field. They've practiced on it, but today was the first day they get a chance to actually play a game on it. Yeah, and you know the adrenaline's gonna be flying. Your senior year's been taken away. You've got a new turf infield. Who gets that? Did you get that? I never no. got that, absolutely not. <laughs> Who knew what turf was except for the Astrodome back then? So it's a beautiful time to showcase what you can do and just to be able to get out on the field. All right, we're excited to see game two of our doubleheader. Baseball is back. High school sports are back here on Spectrum Sports. It's Truman and William Crispin coming your way next. Hi V, proud to sponsor Greater Kansas City High School Athletics. Welcome back to William Christman High School, Ross Family Field, the site of the second game of our doubleheader between William Christman and Truman. Lee Fleisick, Les Norman with you, and uh, saw a pretty impressive performance by William Christman in game one. What do you expect in game two here, Les? Well, the only thing you can think of is, is that you're probably going to have more patience at the plate like they did, uh, uh, just like last game. You're probably going to have guys putting the ball in play. They had, it wasn't just a nine run outburst in the fourth inning of last game for the Bears, but it was consistent driving in runs, consistent scoring the whole game. And so uh, I, I just think you're probably going to see another offensive explosion maybe on both sides here. Randy Ayala Lopez steps in to lead things off for the Patriots. It's a ball one from Frankie Gervey. Ground ball to short. Kona Hudson up and throwing, just a little off the mark. Brought Joseph Cole off the base. And Truman has their leadoff hitter aboard. Yeah, I'm going to say that was probably a hit, too, because Ayala Lopez got down the line really quick. As soon as that ball hit, he was out of the box. And even if it would have been a good throw, I think it would have been a hard pressed to be able to get him. Kona Hudson did a great job of just getting it, setting his feet early, and getting rid of it as quick as he could. But hard to get a speedy leadoff hitter. We've seen Kona Hudson in game one make some nice defensive plays. Good stop there from Billy Ross. Throw to second base is going to be quite in time, but maybe uh, missed the tag. So it may be a throw might have got him off there just a little bit. But, you know, it's heads up. It's about being aggressive. That ball went in the dirt, but he gloved it cleanly. But still, he had a great jump right there. He takes off right away. Quick feet down the line. But, yeah, it looks like he did a good job of avoiding the tag. This time Matt Miller at third base, fires across the diamond. Nice scoop there from Joseph Cole. Now Lopez heads to third. Go, hey. so the, the last inning of last game, and then just the second hitter of this game, we've seen William Christman's two first basemen have some good scoops over there. So here's Sam Scott. Takes this one straight up. Miller. Flies in to try to make the play, but it'll fall in for a hit. One thing we've seen early on, Truman Patriots came swinging the bat, didn't they? Right out of the shoot. I think we've seen four pitches already through three hitters. Waited a long time for a game. Come out firing. Here's Bradley Menzies. Senior second baseman. Nice grab there from Ross. Runner goes. Ross does a pretty good job of blocking that, keeping it in front of him. I don't know if they were conceding the base runner there, but first baseman wasn't holding the runner on with nobody on second base. 
So Menzies has runners in scoring position. Fouls that one away. Nice pitch from Gervy. Good off-speed pitch there. Had Menzies a little bit open and just a little bit out front. We'll put something in his mind there. He got a little something else to offer. Another nice block from Ross. Well, sometimes I think you wonder in a doubleheader, William Chrisman obviously played the first game, so they've had some swings, they've had a little action. You wonder how the team that didn't get a chance to play would come out, but Truman has come out very aggressively. High to left field. Center fielder Alex Johnson comes across to take it. Runner tags and scores. Ayala Lopez brings it in. The Patriots have the early lead. I think you're right, Leaf. You, uh, it's probably more coaching than anything. You can have there's an appeal to third base that he tagged, but he did tag up, the umpire says. But it's probably more of a coaching point, even with the gamer players and guys ready to play. You want to tell them, hey, you need to get on them early. This is their second game. You haven't been out there very much either. Coming back on the field, let's get excited. And let's go from zero to fifth gear right away. This is Austin Lewis. Ground ball passed. Nathan Potts at second. Here comes the runner around third, and he'll score. Heads up play from Joseph Cole at first base to get the runner, but the run is going to score. Cole records the out, but Truman has the lead as we head to the bottom of the first here on Spectrum Sports. Back here, William Chrisman and uh, Truman able to take a 2-0 lead, but less a uh, heads-up defensive play ends the inning uh, for the Bears. Right, it was very interesting because Covington looked like he'd come up like he was not going to throw, but the base runner thought that he was going to turn, and after that fake, he couldn't quite get there. First baseman did a great job of diving back and getting him. Good call by the umpire as well. So uh, the run does score, but the third out is made. Joseph Cole with a nice diving tag to record the last out of the inning, but uh, Truman takes the lead. Of course, we've seen uh, William Crispin, no stranger to uh, falling behind early and then storming back. It'll be interesting to see how Crispin responds. You've got Brooks Holman, Holden on the mound for Truman. He is, coach, uh, according to Coach Corey Latham, uh, he's, a, he's their stud workhorse, has good command of his curveball, has a tailing fastball, and every once in a while we can expect a potential Evis pitch, which I haven't seen, and quite some time on any level. So Holden Brooks will see Billy Ross leading things off for William Chrisman. Ross with a nice first game. Two for three in that opener. With a double, single, scored three runs. About all you want from your leadoff hitter. Right. Thanks for correcting me. I called him Brooks Holden. It's Holden Brooks. I apologize to his family there. You know they're going to Gonna watch this. Say, hey, come on, let's go. So my apologies. Holden Brooks, the left-handed stud, the senior workhorse. Ground ball to short. Zach Servi fires across. Oh. Boy, the middle of this infield. There's some tough going. Trying to get on base up the middle because these guys are really solid through the middle of the uh, infield, Les. Right, I believe those two uh, call themselves uh, peanut butter and jelly. A little PB and J right there, been together quite a long time. And Corey Latham's team, he's got these seniors that have been together, like we talked about in the opener, since the seventh grade. So how important is it for these guys to get back on the field? So we see Matt Miller. He also with a nice game uh, to open our day. On base five times, four times by a walk, hit by a pitch once, scored three runs, ground ball. Sam Scott, strong throw across the diamond. They're two down. I think you can expect to see a lot of these ground balls today. Holden Brooks is, is going to be in the zone. He's a, he's a crafty guy, but you can see that his, his ball tails away. 
to righties, and, and although it, it's you can teach your teams to stay inside the ball, if they see a pitch and it has late tail to the righties and doesn't have a lot of velocity, you can get a lot of accidental top hand rollover. So that left side of the infield could be busy today for Truman. Trey Cates steps in. All he did was have two hits, including a two RBI double in the opening game and played some great first base in that final inning to uh, seal the victory. All from a young guy, too, just finishing up his freshman year in high school. Breaking ball down low, two and one. It's our first look at Holden Brooks curveball. Very, very tight. Good command of it, according to Coach Corey Latham. So Kate's ahead in the count now, three and one. Two down. Truman out to a two nothing start here as we play in the bottom of the first. Kate's with solid contact, but Servi is there. Three up, three down for the hometown Bears. So we head to the second inning here at William Christman on Spectrum Sports. Back here at William Crispin High School, talking a little strategy with Les Norman. Patriots lead it 2-0. Bryce Greenwald steps in. Looks at a strike from Frankie Gervey. Talking with Truman head coach Corey Latham yesterday. The day before, talked about Bryce Greenwald has a cannon for an arm. Loves the opportunity to show it when he can. And what catcher with a good arm doesn't, right? It's low from Frankie Gervey, two and two. We were talking about the delayed steal in that first game from Van Horn is fouls it away. Be a nice matchup with Greenwald. I'd like to see him with that. Uh, yeah, would be. On that delayed steal. I mean, it's, it, it's always fun to run and steal bases, but when, when you have a catcher that can throw and can single-handedly shut down the running game or bail your pitcher out if he doesn't have a good move. It makes a difference, doesn't it? It makes a big difference. It makes it for an exciting game because then the strategy just factors in that much more. Bunting game increases a little bit. Extra, you know, the big head increases a little bit. And you've seen it. As soon as the first runner gets thrown out, it just puts a little bit of doubt in everybody's mind. <laughs> the diameter uh -huh. the diameter of the eyes looks a little different. <laughs> right back up the middle. Nice hit from Greenwald. And once again, the Patriots have their leadoff hitter on. Good piece of hitting right there, too. That's one thing for, for high school players that haven't been playing and been shut down. In the first game, and then even right there, you can see he stays inside. It was an off-speed pitch. He could have rolled over it, but he kept his hands out front, didn't do too much. Two strikes, just right back up the middle and hits it hard. It goes to show you, you don't have to swing hard to hit the ball hard. And George Brett used to always say, hit the ball hard, not far. If you try to hit the ball far, you're going to pull off, and mechanics are going to break down, and you probably won't even hit it hard. But if you focus on the contact point, you'll hit the ball hard more consistently. Anthony Locke in to run for his catcher at first base now. That one popped up by Luke Reagan. Tough play over there for Matt Miller. Yeah, well, you can tell that wind has picked up and factored in a little bit. It's gone a couple different directions this time. That one was out past foul territory, but the wind caught it on the way back down and brought it right back into halfway into fair territory. Had a light drizzle in the first game. It's dry now, it's still overcast, beautiful day. Two and one now to Luke Reagan. That one gets to the backstop, so Locke will head to second base. It's 
Strike on the outside corner. Full count now, three and two. Like an umpire that makes a call where you have no doubt what he's trying to tell you. Round ball to second. Nathan Potts up with it. Job, Over Luke. to first. Job, Luke. Luke Reagan doing an excellent job of situational hitting. Runner on second. There's nobody out. You're at bat. The result needs to be that guy that's on second, your fellow runner. Finishes that at bat over at third base. Good job. So this is Dane Blankenship. Center fielder. Looks at one up high. Dane Blankenship known center field for covering a lot of ground. Going to be rushing a little bit. Gets that one in the back, so he'll be at first base. As a pitcher, too, being a former center fielder, there's nothing a pitcher likes better than if he's getting consistent hard contact all over the field. You're able to cover some ground and get the ball back in and bail him out a little bit on off days. So it's super important. Here's Holden Brooks, the pitcher. With two on and one out. Working inside to the lefty, 2-0. Oh. Gervy's starting to struggle with his command just a little bit. Throwing some balls up, hit the last guy, and then threw that behind. Holden Brooks. Strike call, 2-1. and one. Pitch from Gervy, two and two. Swing and a miss. Second out of the inning recorded, and that takes us back to the top of the order. Randy Ayala Lopez, who singled and scored a run in the first. Could be a big out here, runner on third with one out, getting the strikeout. Holden Brooks could have helped himself there. <laughs> Lifted in the air, short center field. Alex Johnson calls for it and makes the catch. Two runners on, but no damage done here in the second inning. We're heading to the bottom of the second. Truman leads Chrisman 2 nothing here on Spectrum Sports. Back at William Christman as the Bears come to bat here in the bottom of the second. Lee Fleisick, Les Norman with you. It's nice to see you. It's good to see baseball again. It is. It's good to see you first and foremost. Been a while. Forcibly separated. But uh, good to know you and your family are healthy and doing well. And it's just nice to be back out in good weather outside, being around people, and especially on a baseball field, a new field. New turf on the infield here. Ross Family Stadium now, just dedicated today. And to have some seniors not having their baseball career come to an end back in February, March, where now they get to get back on the field and play. This is Ralph Covington. Pounds at foul. Covington with a nice day going. A couple of hits, two RBIs in the first game. Pitch outside, one and one. You talked about seniors, and Truman certainly has those all over the roster, don't they? Yeah. I believe the plethora would be the right word. Massive amount of seniors. Been there since seventh grade together. Dane Blankenship out in center field. Doesn't have to move far, and there's one down. Corey Lathram told us, coaches told him, we want to play on senior day. A lot of introductions. Right. Ten seniors on the current roster. 
But I think it was important to him as much as it was to the seniors to, to see them play at least one more game and give them a proper send off. Joseph Cole sends that one into right field. A two down. You can see already Truman Sr. Holden Brooks getting guys off balance. First inning it was three ground balls to the left side, and then here in the second inning it's a fly out to center and a fly out to right, mixing it up well. Andrew Campos steps in, swings at a breaking pitch, 0-1. Campos had a pair of two RBI doubles in our opening game against Van Horn. Swing and a miss. That's where you see Holden Brooks very effective and well-controlled curveball. Got some tight, late break on it. Drops it on top of the plate. Campos able to fight that one off. William Chrisman won our opener. 14-12 over Van Horn. 26 runs, 21 hits. It's your normal day at the ballpark, yeah. right? 0-2 oh, pitch is fouled back. Swing and a miss. Nice job from Holden Brooks. He's faced six batters, retired them all. Truman has a 2-0 lead as we head to the top of the third here on Spectrum Sports. Back at William Christman where Truman has taken a 2-0 lead as we head to the top of the third inning. The two, three, and four hitters do up for the Patriots. Zach Servi. Grounded out to third his first time up. We'll face Frankie Gervey. Inside 2-0 oh now to Servi. Short stop. Bows it away, two and one. Wonder at uh, what point, Leaf, last game, where were, where, what point were we at the same time limit this time, top of the third? <laughs> so last game we might have just been in the bottom of the first. Three one pitch now to Servi. Looks to strike two. A lot of offense in game one, won by William Christman over Van Horn. Fouls that one back. Out of play. Servi draws a walk. That'll bring up Sam Scott. Who singled and scored a run in the first inning. Hard hit right at Matt Miller. Miller digs it up. Long throw. Not in time. That'll send Servi to third base. Tough play for Miller, who knocked it down. Yeah, it was a, a it was a hard hit ball, just a little bit to his left. He knocked it down. Did a good job of going back after it and pushing down. Tried to make a good throw, but tough to make first the first baseman go up into the line. So that'll put runners at the corners now for Bradley Menzies.
Runner goes, fouled away. See Coach Corey Latham telling him that Sam Scott got a good jump over there, and if it's the first pitch, it really is okay to take a pitch, especially a pitch down in the zone that isn't a strike. Let him steal it and get two guys in scoring position. We got another good jump. Now he's caught up between first and second. Hmm. That one gets away, and Scott is safe at second base. That was an interesting situation where you wonder what happened here. Second baseman Nathan Potts didn't do a whole lot with it. He's just going to throw it back to him. and Almost as if they were conceding that runner going into second to save the runner from scoring at home. And Coach Miles Shelton is going to have to use that as a teaching moment right now. For a moment, it looked like maybe Scott was just trying to draw a throw. They were going to, yeah, it looked like they were going to concede the run for the out there. But when when you're up 2 nothing already in the third inning, you'll you'll trade that to take a three-run lead. But, but again, these guys haven't been able to practice a whole lot. They haven't played. And so it's just one of those difficult situations if he hasn't been in that situation very much to, to wonder what to do there. So two I runners understand. in scoring position. And Billy Ross with another nice block. He's doing a good job behind the plate. He really is. Foul ball. Looks like that kind of caught a piece of Billy Ross too. He's getting getting his work this game in just the two innings now that we're into the third. Blocking a lot and taking one off the arm. One two pitching out of Menzies. Another good job by Ross to get out in front of it. If the game ends now. He's my MVP. <laughs> He's been an animal back there already. In the left field, that'll drop for a base hit. One run is in. Patriots are going to send two. The throw to the plate is in time. Nice relay. Base hit, but a good relay there. Left fielder Trey Cates keeping the ball down, getting it to Matt Miller. It's a good job of hitting right there. Stayed inside the ball. Trey Cates did a good job in a sloppy outfield. Did a good job keeping the ball down, using the turf. Good relay right there. Great tag and positioning by your catcher. So one down now to Austin Lewis. RBI single in the first. That was a balk. And I'll send Menzies to third. Big swing and a miss from Austin Lewis. One and two. Situational hitting again. Infield back a little bit. Good curveball. Nice pitch from Frankie Gervey to get a much needed out there now. Two down. A little bit of a defensive approach there by the hitter. Austin Lewis. Bryce Greenwalt now, who had a single in the second. Biggest key to these youths, especially when you get guys on third base with less than two outs, is to get them to stay calm. Go up there, trust your hands, have some peace about your at bat. You want to come through so bad that you want to do it on this pitch or the next pitch or the next pitch. And that's the difference, but learning how to let the game come to you as opposed to trying to just chase and pressure, 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 because pressure most times is going to result in failure. 
And most times it doesn't take a lot to get that runner home from third. It doesn't. When you have the infield back right there, if you can get in that mindset that you don't care about your batting average or you're not fearful of striking out, you can just let the pitch come in. You see it a little bit longer. You allow yourself to just put the barrel in the ball, hit a ground ball up the middle. Remember the first time that happened that I really learned it professionally the right way. I was big league camp playing for the Royals and just gone second base and I wanted to come through, but I wanted to get that runner over with nobody out and really focused on staying inside the ball. I ended up hitting an accidental bloop single to center. So the ball hit him there, but so he didn't try to get out of the way. So 3-2 with two outs. That one got him. So Anthony Locke will come in to run. Runners at the corners with two down. Unless you were talking about situations in game one, early in the game, when you think about, okay, you know, what, what's a key moment in the game? Right now for William Crispin, you got to limit the damage, right? You do. And, and there's mental mistakes that have been going on. And so you have to get to a point where you take a deep breath and calm down. You know you've got a good offensive team, even though you're facing a good pitcher in Holden Brooks for the Truman Patriots. You know you can hit. You're going to put the ball in play. So just limit the damage and take it pitch by pitch. Runner goes. It's just about staying calm. No throw, so runners at second and third with two down. Luke Reagan grounded out to second back in the second inning. Ross can't get in front of that one. Throw gets away. One run scores. Here comes another. The Patriots get two. Just when we talked about limiting the damage and staying calm, see a pass ball. Brad Menzies scores from third. Billy Ross doing such a great job trying to dive, trying to make a throw. You can see he hustles out of there good. He makes a dive and throws, but just overthrows it. And the base runner doing a great job, just never stopping, coming all the way around to score two runs on one pass ball. Patriots really manufacturing some runs here to go up 5 nothing. As much as we talk about Chrisman needing to limit the damage, you want Truman, they're going to be in a position where you just keep the gas pedal moving. You keep your foot on the gas pedal and just keep them down as much as you can because you can beat them physically as far as hits and all that, but then also mentally, if you keep attacking and attacking at some point, the other team is going to get on their heels a little bit. That pitch outside. So Reagan is on base with two down. Here's Dane Blankenship. It also goes to show you Truman head coach Corey Latham doing a good job of having his team ready in certain situations to, to take aggressive chances. That one finds the back of Blankenship. time right now for senior pitcher from William Crispin, Frankie Gervey, just to take a deep breath, try to relax. You got two outs, forcing any base, throw some strikes. Facing his opposing pitcher, Holden Brooks, struck out in the second inning. That one up high, one and one. Leadoff hitter on deck. 2 1 pitch. There's a strike, 2 and 2. Oh. 
That one lifted to left field. Kate's back. Underneath it and makes the grab. That'll end the inning. But Truman puts three on the board. The Patriots lead at 5 0 as we head to the bottom of the third here on Spectrum Sports. Back here, William Chrisman. As the Truman Patriots lead 5 0, we head to the bottom of the third. Seven, eight, nine hitters up for the Bears. We've seen a pretty good pitching performance early on here by Holden Brooks. Had a really nice location and uh, forced some ground balls. Really good curveball, too. Very late breaking. And we saw Andrew Campos have a good last game. Had a couple doubles. Stayed inside the ball really well in his last at bat. Holden Brooks had dropped a couple curveballs on top of home plate and wasted a fastball high and away that Campos fought off and then came back with the curveball and snuck it in there. So, see, he's one of those little crafty lefties that. He's got decent velocity, but not great. But because his curveball is so good and his fastball tails, just leaves you thinking a lot and makes you get yourself out as opposed to being overpowering. And that's it's that Jamie Moyer type, you know, played 21 years in the big leagues and didn't throw 85 miles an hour just because he could get guys thinking and get guys to get themselves out. So here's Alex Johnson to lead off the third. Looks at one outside from Holden Brooks. Takes that one out of play, one and one. Corey Latham talked about the confidence of his pitcher, Holton Brooks. This is the breaking ball, two and one. You don't see many curveballs like that that come out that looks like a high fastball, stays up there a long time, and then bites really hard, almost at a 12-6 clip. Very impressive, very poised. Little change up right there, turns it over. Just super consistent. He can lull you to sleep a little bit and get you to panic and wave at stuff. This is a guy that he just is in complete control of his game. Two two pitch. Strike three called. Second strikeout for Holden Brooks. Came back with a good tailing fastball right over the outside corner right there. You wonder was Alex Johnson thinking about another curveball or what's going on in his head there? And hitting, you can't think about anything. You just have to react. This is Kona Hudson, the shortstop. For his first base hit of the day. Fouls that one back, one and one. Swing and a miss, one and two. Is up high, one and two. Good spot, though. He's doing a good job keeping it down, working inside, working outside. Total command. Holden Brooks knows how to pitch, doesn't he? He does. Hudson fights that one off, stays alive. Beautiful breaking ball. Strike three called. His third strike out of the game, second of the inning. It's not just the fact that his curveball and his command is so good, but you just don't see a lot of guys. I mean, look at the size of the bend on that. I mean, it's the majority of hitters are going to give up on that as soon as the ball's out of his hand. So it's just a fantastic curveball and just well placed in time. So Nathan Bott steps in, the second baseman with two down here in the bottom of the third.
Just misses with that breaking pitch, two and one. Fouled away, two and two. We talk about changing speeds and changing locations and really like keeping hitters off balance. He's doing a great job. It's the kind of pitcher that you go back to the dugout thinking, why can't I hit this guy? Yeah. And we're seeing why. Oh, oh just misses. He was walking off the mound. <laughs> Got to be honest with you, I think I would have hit <laughs> Three and two. <laughs> that might have been. Holden Brooks wanted that call. We've had some great umpires today, man. Tough no call there. Taking him to center field, Blankenship. Hasn't had to show off his speed. That one's right to him. So it's three up, three down. Holden Brooks has retired nine straight. We're heading to the top of the fourth. Truman leads Chrisman 5 0. Where would you rather be on a Saturday afternoon? So glad you're with us here at William Chrisman, Ross Family Field. Truman is coming in, taking a 5 0 lead over the hometown Bears. We go to the top of the fourth. Randy Ayala Lopez who led off the game with a single, scored a run. Flew out to center in the second inning, facing Frankie Gervey. Looked at a bunt. Did not offer. 1 0. Good leadoff hitter, too. Showing bunt, making the third baseman come in. Always keeping the defense on their toes. Are on the inside corner, one and one. Like the style of leadoff hitter, this smaller guy, gritty, will bunt, good speed. High socks. Yes, the old school, the high socks. Even on turf, find a way to get his uniform dirty. Two one pitch. I think that almost hit his bat on it, the way through. It sounded like it hit it. Yep, it did. It ticked his bat. Um, part Didn't get the no, call, but says no. But it sure yeah, sounded could, like yeah, it. Yeah, you could hear it. But that's a tough call. I mean, it was so light. It's easy for us from this angle. But he's up in there. But yeah, that did hit his bat. But it's just such a faint tick of the bat. Three one pitch. Up high. Ayala Lopez is on base again. Unfortunately, because we get a lot more good kids out there. So Zach Servi steps in. He walked in the third, scored a run. That might be it for Frankie Gervey. Like Trey Cates, a left fielder, the freshman's going to come in in relief. Possibly. Yep. He's getting the ball, so you get the early scouting report. <laughs> what can we expect from him as a pitcher? Well, pretty good move. Um, when he when he has a consistent stride, he's got a, got a live fastball, also pretty good breaking ball. That's pretty de decent velocity here. Um, good, good tail on it a little bit. Sometimes he'll he'll rush a little bit. And he'll be up in the zone, but when he's on, he he is a a bulldog type guy on the mound. So, you know, it's just uh, just a matter of staying under control. And I mean, as an athlete, he's beyond his years, no matter what. But again, he's got that good fastball, curveball. Sometimes he'll throw a change up. It's just a matter of keeping the ball down, like anything. Trey has played for Les Norman. So we get a little insight there. Just a, Obviously a fine hitter. Yeah, he's a good hitter. Good defender first base. We saw that too. We've seen his bat. We've seen his glove. He's a quiet guy. He's a good pitcher on the mound. And um, of all those talents, comes from an incredible family. Mom and dad are teachers. Dad is the head varsity basketball coach here at Christman, assistant baseball coach here, but of all the good things he does, he's, his greatest asset is he's just a hard working, good student, but a hard working, respectful, kind human being. 
All right, so the lefty will inherit a runner at first. Nobody down here in the fourth. And Zach Servi will be the first one to face the lefty. Kate yeah. starts him off with a strike. Looks like he's got some pretty good velocity. Yeah, he's got some good good tailing movement with, with velocity on it. It's good to see him come right after inside corner, come right after the hitter as well. Oh. Runner goes. Throw to second. Hey. Not in time. And Al Lopez has a stolen base. Tells you his speed, too, to get down there because even with a lefty, lefty slide step, still got down there quickly. Strike call. One and two. Well, players like that are invaluable, aren't they? I mean, you can play a great first base for you. You can pitch, obviously. Knows his way around the outfield. Just mm -hmm. misses. On the one-two pitch, two and two. It's a good pitch right there, borderline pitch. Good breaking ball. Hitter gave up on it, didn't get the call. That one hit hard to left. Over the head of Gervey. That'll be a run for Truman. RBI double for Zach Servi. Good piece of hitting by Zach Servi. Look up pitch down in the zone. Good fastball down in the zone. and. Kept his hands inside right there. Little middle of the plate, but started to come down in. So here's Sam Scott. Been on base twice. Singled, scored a run in the first. to the backstop, so Servi will head to third. You can hear Coach Latham over there at third base and hey, you can stay inside that ball and go the other way when Zach Servi was on second base. You don't want to try to necessarily pull the ball, but now down six, they're going to do infield in on this turf. Inside two and one. Nobody down here in the fourth inning. One run across already for Truman. That one's popped up. Joseph Cole is under it. Fights the wind and makes a nice catch. It's a tough play right there, and that is a great play by Joseph Cole for many reasons. One, because they're down six and it's only the fourth inning. Two, because if your guy gets a hit and things start snowballing a little bit, you need a good play. Sun's starting to creep. The wind's blowing a little bit. The turf's a little slippery wet. With the infield in, you can get in out like that. That could be big. Bradley Menzies now gets one off the knee. So it'll be first and third for the Patriots now. So look here for Coach Latham to keep the pressure on. Possibly have Brad Menzies taking second base as much as possible, stay out of that double plays. Sure that run gets in if there's contact made. Here's Austin Lewis, RBI single in the first, struck out in the third. Nice pitch there from Trey Cates. Swing and a miss. Coming right at him, too. Two good fastballs. Fouled away, still 0-2. Uh, 
Swing and a miss. Nice breaking pitch from Trey Cates. Big out for the Bears. Two down now with runners at the corners and Bryce Greenwald this could coming be, up. Could be big for them mentally, too, because you had a runner on third, nobody out. You get the infield pop up, and then you get the strikeout. So if you can complete that, you can dodge a pretty big bullet right here. Greenwald looks at strike one, signaled in the second, hit by a pitch in the third. Gates works ahead here, 0 and 2. Greenwald battles that one away, still 0 and 2. Kate's doing a good job being in the zone. Majority of his pitches are strikes. Up high, one and two. Runner goes. Ground ball just past the diving shortstop, Kona Hudson. Hold the line, hold the line, get down. The runner advances to third. Truman stays aggressive. Big hit for Greenwald, who is down 0 2 in the count. I was watching Greenwald in the on-deck circle take some of his warm-up warm -up swings, and I noticed even in, even there, his, he had a very, very short strokes. Did a good job there in an inside fastball, hitting it past the shortstop there. And it's good heads up, a base running right there, trying to take the, take the uh, extra base. And it just goes to show you it's important either if you're close, throw to the lead base or get it to the cutoff man to avoid situations like that. All right, still runners at the corners, two down. Luke Reagan facing the lefty Trey Cates. Reagan grounded out in the second, walked in the third. Good move from Cates to get the runner hung up. Runner comes across from third. Now the Bears will try to record the out. Still in the rundown, and the tag is made. But the run scores. Truman puts two on the board. The Patriots lead 7-0 as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Back at William Christman, where the Patriots put two more on the board in the fourth. They lead the Bears 7-0. Lee Fleisick, Les Norman with you. As Holden Brooks will see the one, two, three hitters for the Bears. So far, Brooks has been very, very impressive. Well, he sure has. He's got uh, three strikeouts, and he's you know he's not he's not biased. He's letting his whole defense have a chance. Field, outfield, fly balls, ground balls. Everybody's getting to play. He's a he's a sharer, so to speak, but still getting guys off balance, doing a good job. Billy Ross will lead things off. The leadoff hitter grounded out to the shortstop in the first inning. Yeah. Well, driven into right center field. Yeah. It's going to fall for a base hit. Ross. Around first on his way to second base with a leadoff double. First base runner allowed by Holden Brooks. First hit allowed by Holden Brooks as well. It's a good job with that tailing fastball. Billy Ross again does a good job staying inside the ball, going with the pitch. Just what you need to do, and that's just the spark that William Crispin may just need here. So it's Matt Miller who grounded out to third. Pops him up, short right field. Ayala Lopez makes the play, one down. Hey, 
Here's Trey Cates. Let's come on in relief. As a pitcher, done a nice job. Brooks wheels to second. One of the toughest things to do for young pitchers is the, the inside move is a little bit easy because you can it's a little deceptive, but doesn't always work with the because the spin move, that jump turn is so fast, and the key is to get your head around quick so you can get that little bit of extra moment on the second base bag so you don't throw the ball in the center field. One on one to Cates. I called another good pitch from Holden Brooks. Outside full count now with one down. Gates gets a hold of that one. Go. I think it's going to go, and it gone. Fits. Way, Way up gone. Up. Trey Cates with a big two run bomb. Well, that's one way to help yourself, isn't it, Leaf? You come in the game, just finishing your freshman year. Eight, ball, ball, ball. Coming in, throwing some BBs, and. Helping yourself with a very long home run. Oh, and way up on the hill. Way, way up there. That was one of those, as soon as he hit it, you knew it. It just was a matter of how far. Here's Ralph Covington. Flew out to center field in the second inning. Side one one. All that muscle you got won't hurt. Covington fouls it back two and two. First little bit of negative action for Holden Brooks, but comes right back in there, challenging the next hitter. He'd retire nine straight. It's Covington to bounce back to him. Two down. Or, yeah, two down. For Joseph Cole, the first baseman. So say that slow curve right there that breaks so much and makes you react late. It's the it's the tantalizer. Starts him off with a breaking ball. One and out. I've got a piece of the catcher Greenwald as well. One and one, two down here. Bottom of the fourth. Taking deep to right field. Ayala Lopez goes back and makes a nice play. Good speed in right field. A big two-run home run by Trey Cates. Brings William Christman back. The Bears are on the board. Now 
trailing 7-2. Cates will try to keep his team in the game when we come back to the top of the fifth here on Spectrum Sports. The Bears are on the board here as we go to the top of the fifth, but still trailing 7-2. Trey Cates, who hit that big two-run home run on the mound, facing Luke Reagan. Starts him off with a curveball, swing and a miss, 0-1. Nice tight breaker right there. Not a bad idea, too. You get a Truman team that's very aggressive on first pitches. Strike two called. What's the feeling like after you hit a big two-run homer then you take the mound next inning? Let's say maybe you're not as tight. Yeah. <laughs> you're probably a little bit more loose, but he's come in and attacked. He's had good stuff, been in the zone a little bit. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say it gives you a little more confidence to do what you need to do on the on the defensive or pitching side. One, two pitch, strike three called. Trey Cates picks it up on the mound where he left it off in the batter's box. So here's Dane, uh, Dane Blankenship, junior center fielder. Been hit by the pitch twice. Goes to show you the the future here, though, just finishing up his freshman years, Trey Cates. Imagine that kind of talent here for Miles Shelton for the next three years as a pitcher first baseman and being able to hit like that. He works quickly, too, which is a benefit to the fielders, right? It is, and when you're when you're in the zone, too, it Another team, you know, when a team's scoring a lot of runs, the favor is just kind of control your own pace. But it's kind of a, a momentum crusher when the other team is scoring more runs and you get out there, you hit a home run and you strike a guy out. It's when you're up five runs and still feel like the other team's coming on you, it's a tough place to be. Breaking ball misses. Good job by Billy Ross back there today, man. He's, he's a cat back there. Full count. Blankenship draws a walk. He's on base for the third time. So this will be Anthony Locke. Lock with a big swing, 0 and 1. It's a big sophomore. Lays off the high one, 1 and 1. Good move. Trey Cates with a nice pickoff. The kid's having a pretty good day so far. Two one pitch now to Anthony Locke. Cates erases the base runner. Lock draws a walk. Randy Ayala Lopez steps in, made a nice play out in right field. Scored two runs, base hit in the first inning. Now 
another good job by Billy Ross keeping that ball in front of him, one and one. Truman coach Corey Latham telling his base runner, just get a couple feet off and wait to avoid the pickoff again. Nice throw from Billy Ross. First baseman understands he went the wrong way on the tag. He spun back to his left. He might have had him. Three and one now to the leadoff hitter. Trey Cade starting to drop his arm angle down a little bit, which makes him push the ball. He's been up in the zone the last two hitters. Yeah, very deceptive move to first, doesn't he? It's good. It's a good move. Lefties, good left-handed moves can really shut down a running game. Third walk of the inning. And that'll bring up Zach Servi. Servi with a double in the fourth. Walked in the third, he scored two runs today. Foul back. Sometimes as young pitchers, when you start having trouble finding the zone, you tend to start working a little bit too quick and you can't get back into your rhythm. Third to third. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Just gets right past here. Matt Watch Miller. Both runners would advance now. I tried to stop you. So the table really set now for Zach Servi. Two down. Top of the fifth, Truman trying to add to its lead. Survey gets a hold of that one. Sends it deep to center field. Alex Johnson there to record the final out. A lot of base runners, but no runs. We're heading to the bottom of the fifth. Truman leads 7-2. Truman leading Christman 7-2 here at William Christman High School. Lee Fleisick, Les Norman with you. Holden Brooks heads back to the mound. For the bottom of the fifth. We'll see Andrew Campos, Alex Johnson, and Kona Hudson for the William Christman Bears. Christman finally broke through after Brooks had retired nine straight. Big two run homer by Trey Cates in the fourth. Swing and a miss from Campos. Ball one up high. Base hit. Campos is a good hitter too, isn't he? Boy, he sure is. He had those two doubles last time. And last game we were talking about how he did a good job of staying inside. And his first at bat, he was pulling off, pulling off, pulling off. And even in the first the first pitch of this at bat, but then right there, the ball came came down and started to go away, but he kept his bottom hand there a little bit and just let the barrel get itself through the zone, get it started. And so uh, instead of hooking it to third, he got a base hit in the gap. This is Alex Johnson who fouls it back. 
Johnson was caught looking in the third inning. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Stays alive, found that one back. Plays off the breaking pitch, one and two. This is low, two and two. It's a good pitch right there by Holden Brooks. Working down, working that movement, keeping the ball down. It's also a good job of taking it by Alex Johnson. Strike three called. Fourth strikeout for Holden Brooks. And there's one down now in the fifth. Came right back to it. A little bit down in the zone, but probably with two strikes, you got to be swinging and protecting a little bit better. This is Kona Hudson. Strikeout victim in the third. Strike called one and one. Strike called one and two. Working both sides of the plate. It's difficult if you start letting them get in your head. Hit hard left center field. On the run is Austin Lewis, who makes the grab. Good piece of hitting right there, but the fielder Austin Lewis got a good jump on it, caught it in stride. It's good work. That's where you can trust your defense and allow yourself to pitch to contact and not worry so much about the strikeout. Okay, this is Alex Smith now hitting. Popped out of play. <laughs> Serve, he's got it. Flips it to his teammate at second, and the inning is over. Truman still leading 7-2 to head to the sixth. Athletics. Back here at William Christman High School, Trey Cates has done a nice job in relief, trying to keep his team in this game. Down 7-2 as the Truman Patriots come to bat here in the sixth inning. This will be Sam Scott. Strike call. Scott's been on base twice, singled in the first quarter run. Hit hard to center field. Back near the fence is Alex Johnson. 
It's a long out. We're down. Bittersweet when you hit those because you're thinking, man, I got, I really got good, good solid contact on it. If I'd have pulled it, it might have been extra. But then you're still over. So depends on your your mindset, frame of mind. There as a pitcher, you're just happy to use your defense. Bradley Menzies, single, scored a run in the third. Hit by a pitch his last time up. Driven hard to center field. Alex Johnson there again. And they're two down. Alex Johnson's done a great job getting good jumps and catching it in stride. Looks like just a, a, a pure center fielder. As soon as the ball's hit, you're thinking, oh, that could be in the gap. And then he just has no problem just gliding to the ball. So this is Austin Lewis. RBI single in the first inning. Call two and one. That one hit to center field. Johnson on his way back. Not going to get that one. They kept testing him. They did, they did, and it wasn't too far away, but you know, with two outs, you're all right there. A lot of, a lot of hard hit balls to center field, but Got to give credit to Austin Lewis. He kept his front shoulder in and set on that pitch pretty well. This will be Bryce Greenwalt. RBI single his last time up. Two hits on the day. In foul territory. Not a play. Under third, Matt Miller. The throw across the diamond. Nice scoop there from Joseph Cole. And then was retired. One runner left aboard. We're into the bottom of the sixth. Truman leads at 7 2. Day is over for Holden Brooks, who had a nice outing. Aiden Torpy will take the mound for Truman. Torpy, a senior. Right hander, obviously, and Holden Brooks really did a nice job for uh, Truman this afternoon. Boy, he sure did. He just had the the one pitch and the, the long home run to freshman Jay Cates. Kept guys off balance well, got strikeouts here and there, used his defense. He's that workhorse like Truman head coach Corey Latham mentioned. Got Hayden Torpy coming in, throwing good fastball, good hard curve that breaks more like a slider than a curveball. And also we mentioned that Devin Taylor is now in the game for Dane Blankenship, where Randy Ayala Lopez will move from right field to center field. And Devin Taylor will play right field.
All right, this is Billy Ross. Doubled his last time up. Scored a run in the fourth. Hit hard to left field. And gone. And gone. Yeah. That ball really carried. Sure did. That wind's starting to pick up. Just that a little bit blown out to left field. It doesn't matter how far it goes as long as it goes over, right? Second home run for the Bears. That's now a 7-3 Truman lead. Billy Ross had quite the day. Both games now. Two for three this game with a double and a home run. Scored a couple runs, but... Been great behind the plate, too. On a day where the debut of Ross Family Field. So here's Matt Miller. 0 for 2 in this one. It was on five times in the first game win over Van Horn. That's how you greet a new pitcher in a game when you're down, right? Right back up the middle, past the diving survey. And a base hit for Miller. So you can see the difference a lot of times with these varsity hitters where when Holden Brooks was in the game, he's got movement, changes speeds, location, and now you've got a guy that just throws hard. Good breaking ball, but those hard, those hard, those hard, and those guys can sit on that if you're in the zone. There's Trey Cates. Buck called. Umpire says he started and stopped his motion. So that'll send Miller to second base, and here's Trey Cates, who homered his last time up. A monster shot to left. Breaking ball misses, 1-0. and oh. Sign of respect there to the young hitter. First pitch breaking ball, huh? Runner on second, nobody out. I think everybody in the parking lot saw the first home run, so. <laughs> I think he hit it over the parking lot. Yeah. So we're going to miss 1-1. One one. Kate's asked for time. It's called. Steps back in one and one. Over down here in the bottom of the sixth. Bears trying to claw their way back into this one. Down seven, three, two and one. This is three and one. Outside, Kate draws a walk. So now Ralph Covington steps in. Truman getting some more action in the bullpen now. Looks like Anthony Locke getting ready. Covington fouls that one back.
breaking ball misses. Swing and a miss. Good pitch, one and two. Reaches out and fouls that one away. Good job fighting that off. We've seen Ralph Covington today do a good job of going the other way. This is where a, a, pit, a big kid with a little bit of a long swing but likes to get extended. There's a hole in the inside part of his swing if he's able to hit the inside corner without hitting the batter. Popped into foul territory and out of play. Covington really battling here with Aiden Torpy. Yeah, the mistake location here for Torpy to throw would be something a little bit up in the zone and then off the outside corner because that's going to fit right into Covington's stroke. So you want something in the dirt ahead one, two, or hard in. This is outside with the breaking ball, two and two. He's trying to get it over there. Hard thing for young batteries is to understand the, the different styles of swing and how to pitch. Runners go. Covington fouls it back. Two two pitch. Tuppy turns towards second. Good battle going on here between pitcher and batter. Interesting, you can see that a lot of times at this level, the lack of wanting to come inside because he's trying to throw a curveball away, foul ball. Fastball, ball, curveball, ball. Fastball, fastball, foul ball, foul ball, but nothing inside. Runners go again. Covington grounds it to second. Runners will advance. Hey, didn't have a one. It's a good job on both right there. He did finally come in there, and so Covington jammed himself, but hit it slow enough to advance both runners to get them in scoring position. So it's a good job on finally making the adjustment as a pitcher, and then Covington did a good job making contact and advancing the runners. Corey Latham with a conference on the mound. That'll be Joseph Cole stepping in for William Chrisman. So the tying run with one out stands in the on-deck circle. Andrew Campos had a pretty good day at the plate too, but to get through Joseph Cole first. Cole with a couple of flyouts to right. Murphy's pitch, the strike. Torpy puts a lot into it, doesn't he? Well, he sure does. There's a lot, a lot of motion in there, but sometimes you get that with guys that throw hard. Tall and lean, strong kid. Just getting everything you can in, moving forward. 
Unfortunately, a lot of times, the more movement that you have, the harder it is to be consistently in the zone, or at least around the zone, to get hitters to chase, become a feast or famine type. Coming right out of his socks, three and one. Make no mention, if you're around the zone, that can be really effective, too, because a hitter's eyes tend to bounce all over the place when there's legs and arms and all kinds of stuff going on all over the place, but you give that confidence back to the hitter if you're not consistently around the plate. 3-1 pitch. Grounded a short. Servi across the diamond, a little low. A run will score. Pressure situations, the Zach Servi, the sure-handed, sure-arm guy over there, just kind of aimed the ball over there and short hopped the first baseman. To Everybody moves up one without recording the out. Here's Andrew Campos, very dangerous. Hits it hard to left field down the line, but foul. <laughs> like high school drama in baseball. And a bunch of fans over here to our left jumping up. They couldn't see behind the dugout. Everybody wanted to bend that foul pole over a little bit. You can see the on-deck hitter, Alex Johnson, jumping out so he can get a look, hopping up and down, just hoping for a down-the-line home run there. The wind has picked up a little bit, and it's blowing down that left field line. All right, runners at the corners now for Andrew Campos. You said it, the tie-in run was on the on-deck circle, and now he's standing at the plate. We almost saw him come around to home plate there. Runner goes. No throw. Down to third. Hey, here we go. So two runners in scoring position now for the DH. Leo Henderson will run now for Trey Cates. Now your middle infield's back again. Runner on third, less than two outs. Situational hitting with a good hitter at the plate. Truman will take the out. One and one. Let the chess match begin, Leaf. Here we go. Campos with a hard hit up the middle. Bears will score a run and hold the runner at third. So Campos comes through with a hard hit RBI. Again, Campos didn't try to do too much there. We saw him the first pitch of the at bat hit a home run foul down the left field line. But then later in the bat stays inside the ball and goes back up the middle for a base hit. So it's an excellent job of hitting. You can tell he's been around that plate a little bit. He knows what he's doing with the bat in his hand. There's Alex Johnson. Struck out twice. Campos goes, no throw. Not sure why I got kind of blocked here with the umpire catcher. I'm not sure why that runner didn't score there on that ball. Maybe froze a little bit getting a start. Round to Servi. Cross the diamond. This one's on target. Another run will score. So we've seen Alex Johnson strike out twice, but in this one right here, this at bat right here, with a runner on second and third, or a runner on third less than two outs, this at bat he choked up, shortened up his stroke just a little bit, and again, the infield playing back, they gave him the RBI. You trade that, now you're down one run as the home team. Put up a four spot this inning. 
Good job right there. Excellent job of hitting. Here's the shortstop, Kona Hudson. Still runner at third. Two down. Strike call. The good thing about having an inning like this, too, is even if Hudson makes a last out and you start off with your nine-hole hitter, you're going to get Billy Ross and Matt Miller, and if one guy gets on, Trey Cates, back up in the seventh inning. A pie, one one call this late in the game. Empire's been really consistent. Tough pitch. One two pitch with two down. Good grab there by Greenwald. That's an excellent job. That's where the turf helps you a little bit. It doesn't take as much of a, a dirt chop of a bounce and go to the backstop. Not that there's a whole lot of room back here anyway, but turf helps a catcher in that situation when it's a do or die lunge. Ball misses. Full count now. With two down. Kona Hudson, the number eight hitter. Chance to tie the game. Freck three called. Big pitch from Torpy. But the Bears do some damage. Put up four runs in the sixth. Billy Ross got him going with a home run to left. Christman's back in it, trailing now 7-6 as we head to the seventh. <laughs> Joseph Cole takes the mound for the Bears here as we begin the top of the seventh inning. Trey Cates will move over to first base. Truman will send up their seven, eight, and nine hitters, trying to protect a one-run lead here in the final inning. He'll face at Luke Reagan first. Was on base in the third with a walk. Struck out his last time up. Pitch from Cole is fouled away. Joseph Cole's job this inning right here with 79 hitters coming up is just to be in the zone. Doesn't throw quite, quite as hard. Just mix it up a little bit. Right there. Off a little bit slower, a little bit slower. Getting ahead 0-2, being in the zone. You'd rather get beat with your opposing offense than you would walking guys. Just be around the zone. Nice breaking ball for a called third strike. Good job right there. That's a curveball that doesn't, doesn't move a whole lot, but went a slower fastball away, slower fastball away, and then started it there with a little deceptive curve. Strike three, good work. So here's Devin Taylor with his first at bat. <laughs> Fouled out of play. This is outside, one and one. Brings it in for a strike, one and two. Another breaking ball for a called third strike. The second of the inning. Well, so far, so good for Joseph Cole, just doing what he needs to do. You don't have this goes to show you, Leaf, that you don't have to throw 85, 90 miles an hour as a high school pitcher to be effective. Just be around the play, 
little poise, a little bit of control. Cole's really doing a nice job here. Up high, one and one. Just misses outside. Swing and a miss. Very deceptive as Joseph called. Almost looks like it's coming in harder than it is. Got a little hiss to it, but it just doesn't quite get there before the hitter swings through it. Foul it back. Misses with the breaking ball on two strikes. Three and two now. Two down. Hit to left field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Truman trying to add to its offense with a double here with two down. Strike to Randy, Randy Ayala Lopez. It's been on base three times. Scored a couple of runs. Single in the first. Swing and a miss. Lopez stays alive. Two, two now with two down. This is the hitter that you want to get to because if you get to serve, you Scott and Menzies. It's the, the heart of the Truman order. Ross with a nice job keeping that ball in front of him, but unable to get the runner who was halfway between second and third. Tell you what, if you're an aspiring catcher, you could turn on this DVD or DVR, however you're watching this. And watch a little Billy Ross behind the plate. No doubt. He's been exceptional. Been a, a wall back here. Hustling, diving, saving runs. Ayala Lopez stays alive. Fouls it back at 3-2. Joseph Cole has recorded two strikeouts looking. Trying to keep his bears within one. outside. So it's the number two hitter, Zach Servi. So it's the good news or the bad news. Now you got the good news, the force at any base. It's bad news, you got a guy in Zach Servi that's a good hitter and experienced senior. He doubled in the fourth. Blocked to center his last time up. Another good stop by Ross. Okay. 
That one's popped up. Gervey on the run. Able yeah, to get it to in foul territory. One and one. Not a lot of foul ground down these lines, so it's probably not uh, a large incentive for outfielders or corner infielders to be running toward the fence very much, especially when the ball's been in the air a long time. 1-1 one, one now with two down. That one's popped up. Down the left field line. Miller giving chase. Good play from Kona Hudson. He's a defensive whiz. Makes a big, a big out. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. The Bears need a run here on Spectrum Sports. Bottom of the seventh we go. And Dane Blankenship takes the mound for Truman, hanging on to a one-run lead. My apologies to Andrew Thompson. We had a little confusion there with the jerseys, but Andrew Thompson had that double in the top half of the last inning. Nice hit for Andrew Thompson now as Dane Blankenship takes the mound. We'll try to close this out for the Patriots. going to see Alex Smith, the number nine hitter. Then we'll go to the top of the order. Billy Ross, Matt Miller, and if someone should get on, Trey Cates. Starts him off with a strike. Fastball 0 and 2. A pie 1 and 2. Blank and chip. Fine outfielder. Gets a strikeout. Big swing and a miss there, one down. He's got a good fastball. He's kind of a slinger, gets that three quarter arm. Slow, steady, rhythmic wind up, and then just slings that three quarter fastball out. And here's Billy Ross, homered in the sixth, doubled in the fourth. Into the air. Good play there from Zach Servi. Shortstop going deep to record the second out. So now the Bears are down to their last batter and Matt Miller. Another singled in the sixth. Scored a run. Starts them off with a strike. What you need to do, pound the zone. One, one pitch, two down. Up high, two and one. You know, Blankenship would love to end it here. Great Trey Cates on deck. This is low, three and one. Strike, three and two. Swing, 
and a miss. Big strikeout for Blankenship, and that'll end the game. Truman hangs on for the win, 7-6. Les Norman, really solid performance by both sides. Well, it really is. We, we thought it was going to be a blowout at a 7 to nothing, then 7-2, then 7-6, and Chrisman fought back, but we've seen some good pitching on both sides. We've seen some definitely some great hitting today. 39 runs total wow. on this day in 14 innings. You talk about three total teams today on the field that have been anxious to get back. It was great to see some of these seniors get to play some baseball. Truman gets the win. It's a split of the uh, two games for William Chrisman here at the first games at Ross Family Field. A big thank you to Les Norman. Great to see you again, and thanks for your expertise as always. Enjoyed going seeing you uh, again and on the baseball field. And a big thank you as well to our Spectrum Sports crew and all-star crew. Good to see everyone again back to work. William Crispin splits two games today. Gets the win over Van Horn in the first game. And then it's Truman in the second. So glad you could be with us here in Spectrum Sports. From William Chrisman, where Truman wins it. The second game of the doubleheader, 7-6. This is Lee Fleisick saying good afternoon from Independence.